Hello and welcome to the next episode of Start Collecting Adeptus Custodes Part 5 Warlord Traits. We're going to review the 11 Warlord Traits today, A to Z, and rank them. Please comment with any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content like this. Without further ado, let us begin. Starting with All Seeing Annihilator. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in a friendly dread host unit within 6 inches of this warlord, an unmodified hit roll of a 6 scores one additional hit. So we're off to a good start. This is a nice melee buff that fits the fluff of the dread host and has the benefit of being useful too. This most likely would be used on an Alarus shield captain who teleports in, supporting a large block of Aquilans or Alarus and a dreadnought or two. Looking to how this helps your potential damage output with Dreadnoughts, it on average gives them an extra hit, but this really shines with Alaris or Aquilans. For example, using 6 strong units it would result in 4 additional hits, which is as if you had a 7th member to the squad. On the whole, this is primarily a force multiplier buff, allowing your units to have a larger board presence than they actually do. Whilst build dependent because the Dreadhost is almost exclusively used for teleporter assault armies, this is a strong consideration for a Warlord trait, and if not your main one, should be considered to be given out via a stratagem. Champion of the Imperium Friendly Adeptus Custodes Infantry, Biker and Dreadnought units that are within 12 inches of your Warlord at the start of your opponent's charge phase can make heroic interventions this phase in the same manner as characters. Continuing with the hits train, this is an absolute banger. Just a note, if you're using Trajan, that Champion of the Imperium is his required trait, and it's pretty good. This is a brilliant trait for armies using the proverbial Death Ball or Big Massive Units technique, as it pretty much makes your units unchargeable, if you position them correctly so that their friends get to come to play too when the enemy charges in. The potential value of this trait only increased in 9th edition, which has increased the value of objectives, and this assists in both holding and taking objectives through increasing melee threat ranges. Emperor's Companion. You can reroll dice for the damage inflicted by your Warlord's attacks. This has some value, as most of your characters deal D3 damage and this helps reduce some variance. This is also good for Shield Captain and Dawn Eagle Jet Bikes as you can reroll their salvo launcher damage along with their melee damage. Definitely not a first choice trait, but an alright target for a stratagem to give out if you're looking to buff offensive outputs. Impregnable Mind. Your Warlord can attempt to deny the Witch once in each of your opponent's psychic phases as if they were a Psyker. When they do so, add plus one to the result of the Deny the Witch test. It's essentially a free plus one deny that just adds to our already good anti-psychic arsenal. Situationally, it's good if facing a Psyker heavy army and you don't have many defences built into your army list. You'd use it as a stratagem to dole it out. It's not good enough though to always go for it because it's situational and if a psychic meta emerges you'd look to tailor your list by including Sisters of Silence as they're far more effective and probably utilise this Warlord trait as a supplement to them. Even then though, you're probably best in allying in an Inquisitor, preferably Greyfax or Eisenhorn as they both have multiple Deny the Witch roles and Greyfax is at plus one as this then frees up your ability to give a more useful trait out to your characters. Lock Warden. When resolving an attack made by a character model against this Warlord, subtract 1 from the hit roll. When resolving an attack made by this Warlord against an enemy character unit, subtract 1 from the saving throw, including invulnerable saves. There is also a prerequisite that you must be the Shadowkeeper's shield host. This is a really good Warlord trait, fits the background to a T, and also is nearly unique when looking at other codexes. This is because it's a good defensive buff, combined with a rare and potent offensive one too. Any ability that allows you to make an enemy's invulnerable save worse is one you should always consider taking, as invulnerable save manipulation is very rare. To maximise the value of this, you should look to use this on a bike captain who you intend to use to hunt characters, as they can use their mobility to jump enemy lines and assassinate buff or problematic characters, whilst also having the base toughness to survive being behind enemy lines. A build I'd recommend is Bike Captain with Lock Warden and Auric Aquilus Relic, primarily for the ability to reroll failed charges to improve your delivery system, and also a 3 invulnerable save is always nice to have in a world where they're becoming rarer and rarer. Peerless Warrior. 
Each time you make a hit roll of a 6 plus for your warlord in the fight phase, they can immediately make an attack using the same weapon. These attacks cannot themselves generate any further attacks. On paper, this looks great, but when we go deeper into our characters, they have 5 attacks base and 6 maximum using a misericordia. That hit on 2s, so as a result we don't have many ways to give plus 1 to hit in the codex sadly, so it will only trigger a natural 6s, which on average is a maximum of 1 per fight phase. This definitely is one of the worst of our 11 potential warlord traits and really should never be taken. Radiant Mantle. Your opponent must subtract 1 from hit rolls that target your warlord. This is a great defensive trait, however it pales in the shadow of superior creation. Realistically, this is one of the traits you would look to give out via a stratagem, dependent on the role you expect your character to undertake, i.e. Solo Alaris on an objective or Bike Captain operating independently to help them last longer. Revered Companion. When resolving an attack made against this Warlord, half any damage rounding up. This is a really simple and effective buff on paper. Honestly though, in the current meta it's probably our third best defensive Warlord trait behind Superior Creation and Radiant Mantle. I would expect this to change if anti-vehicle weaponry, i.e. damage 4-6 to six weapons, become more predominant then the value of Revered Companion would definitely rise. Also, it doesn't help that it's in the Aquilin Shield, which is definitely one of the lesser of the five potential shield hosts. There's also definitely multiple better options to take instead, so I doubt this will see play much, if ever. Sally Forth. At the start of your movement phase, add one inch to the move characteristic of all friendly Solar Watch units within six inches of this Warlord until the end of that phase. Whilst their unit is within 6 inches of this Warlord, models in friendly Solar Watch units that have advanced can shoot with rapid fire weapons in the following shooting phase, but must subtract 1 from hit rolls for those attacks. This is a great force multiplier buff that really has to be built around to get the maximum potential out of it. This is primarily going to be used on a bike captain who will roam around with a squad of Virtus Praetors with Hurricane Bolters. This means that no backline units are safe from your jet bikes as it changes their hurricane bolter threat range from 26 inches to 33 inches, which enable you with the right positioning to threaten most of the board. It can also be used in general with foot slogging models as the extra inch of base movement will eventually add up. Superior creation. Each time your warlord loses a wound, roll a d6, and on a 5+, plus, your warlord does not lose that wound. This is an absolute banger of a trait. This essentially allows your Warlord to ignore 1 in every 3 unsaved wounds, which is massive. It turns your natural beat stick of a Warlord into an even tougher beat stick. Taking this must simply be considered every time you field your army. If you put this on a Jetbike Shield Captain with the Captain Commander trait Indomitable Constitution for some added spice, add in Auric Aquilus Relic 2, and you have a Toughness 6, 9 wound, 2 plus save, 3 plus plus invulnerable save, and then even after that a 5 plus to nullify any unsaved wounds. What this means when looking at invulnerable saves, as a lot of the current meta weapons are AP-1, you go from failing a save every 1 in 3 wounds to every 2 in 9 wounds, which if you're not a fan of fractions means you have a 33.3% chance of failing a save, and this Warlord trait reduces it to 22.2% chance of failing a save, which is excellent. Simply put, that is one of the most durable models currently available in the game that doesn't bear a Primarch or Lord of War stat line and it's on a 175 point model that you can fit into any list with ease. Voice of the Emperor. Whilst they are within 9 inches of this Warlord, friendly Imperium units can use this Warlord's leadership characteristic. Add 3 inches to the range of this Warlord's aura abilities. This has already been added to this trait's ability. This is an interesting trait. That's definitely fluff centric as most of the War of the Spider Warlord traits are. It really needs to be built around though to be effective. It's best in Imperium Soup for sure, however that army build isn't very good at the moment currently with 9th edition. To effectively use this it should be given out via a stratagem to a Vexilla sporting either a Defensor or Magnifica to maximise the defensive bubbles they provide along with their leadership benefits. So on to the part of the video you've all come to see. Ranking the Warlord Traits. They summarise to either Tiers 1-3, to three, Build Dependent or a simple Do Not Take. If you disagree with my takes or think you've got a better intro, please let me know in the comments below. In reverse order, starting with Do Not Take. It's so bad in comparison to the other 10 Warlord Traits, it literally got its own category and didn't even earn a tier rank. 
Peerless Warrior. On to build dependent now. These warlord traits should only be used if you've built your army around them, otherwise they're probably not worth using. Starting with everyone's favourite karaoke master, Voice of the Imperium, followed up by a trait from the definitely not White Scars custodians, even though they're painted in a similar colour scheme, Sally Forth. And rounding out this tier with the spy network that makes Torquemada Cotiers feel inferior, or seeing Annihilator. On to tier 3 now. These are traits that are either surpassed by others in higher tiers for their effectiveness, or just highly situational. Starting with everyone's favourite bodyguard, Revered Companion. Followed up by a mind so dense that Rogel Dawn tried to use it to fortify the Imperial Palace during the Siege of Terror, Impregnable Mind. And move aside Vect, rounding this out with the Emperor's best friend forever, Emperor's Companion. On to tier 2 now. These are traits that are just behind the top tier due to not being as efficient or all the time awesome. Starting with the man with the permanent spotlight on him, Radiant Mantle, and rounding out with everyone's favourite Ray-Ban wearer, Lock Warden. On to the final top tier now, these are the best traits available to the Custodes and you need a really good reason not to use them in your army. Starting with the finest with a capital F, Hero in the Imperium, move aside Caiaphas Kane, it's Champion of the Imperium. And to bring this list home with alchemy on par with Frankenstein, superior creation. Thank you all for watching, please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment below. I'll catch you next time with part 6, Captain Commander Traits.